Global news outlets have covered U.S. President Joe Biden's threat to defend Taiwan from Chinese aggression, which has renewed attention on the escalating hostilities between the small democratic island and its neighboring autocratic powerhouse. However, the state of relations today is the worst it has been in many years, prompting concerns of a military confrontation even as analysts warn that a full-scale conflict is still unlikely to break out anytime soon. Welcome to Geopolitics and Money, the channel where you can find everything about politics and laws. In today's video, we will see what we need to know about the impending war between China and Taiwan. Before getting into the video, please share and subscribe to our channel for more videos like these. Also tap on the bell icon for notifications. Without further ado, let's get into it. Taiwan, also referred to as the Republic of China, is an island situated across the Taiwan Strait from mainland China. The PRC declares that Taiwan will one day unify with the mainland and sees the island as a renegade province. Political leaders in Taiwan, an island nation with a democratically elected government and a population of 23 million, hold contrasting opinions about the status of the island and its ties to the mainland. Since Taiwanese President Tsa Ing-wen's victory in 2016, cross-strait tensions have risen. Tsa has rejected a plan that Ma Ying-ju, her predecessor, supported in order to promote stronger ties across the Taiwan Strait. In the meantime, Beijing has been acting more and more aggressively, including flying fighter jets close to the island. In recent months, China's covert support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine has only fed rumors about Beijing's interaction with Taiwan and sparked concerns about how the world may respond should China launch an attack. Taiwan has moved closer into the U.S.'s circle as a result of China's authoritarian turn under leader Xi Jinping and deteriorating relations with Washington. Beijing claims that Taiwan is a component of the One China that it claims to be the only home of. It pursues Taiwan's eventual unification with the mainland, seeing the PRC as the only legitimate representative of China. The 1992 consensus represents, in the words of PRC President Xi Jinping, a consensus that the two sides of the strait belong to One China and would work together to seek national reunification. China, Mongolia, Taiwan, Tibet, and the South China Sea are still regarded as being parts of the ROC according to Taiwan's Kuomintang-drafted constitution. Tsa stated in her 2016 inauguration speech that she was elected president in accordance with the Constitution of the Republic of China, which is a one-China document, and that she would safeguard the sovereignty and territory of the Republic of China. Tsa also promised to conduct cross-strait affairs in accordance with the Republic of China Constitution, the Act Governing Relations Between the People of Taiwan Area and the Mainland Area, and other relevant legislation. Beijing, however, disregarded this statement and stopped conducting business with Taiwan on an official level. China might make an effort to achieve reunification through non-military means, such as fostering closer economic connections. The Chinese military, however, would be far superior to Taiwan's in any military conflict. Before we move on, for more interesting content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications whenever a new video is posted. China spends more on defense than any other country outside the U.S. and has access to a wide range of weapons, including planes, missile technology, aircraft, and cyber attacks. Although much of China's military force is concentrated elsewhere, there remains a large disparity between the two sides overall, for instance, in terms of active duty personnel. The people of Taiwan have a strong distaste for such a structure. Tsa and even the Kuomintang have criticized the one country, two systems paradigm in light of Beijing's recent attack on freedoms in Hong Kong. The PRC shelled several distant islands ruled by the ROC on two consecutive occasions as military hostilities erupted once more. The relationship peaked in 2015 in Singapore during a historic summit between the leaders of the Kuomintang and the Chinese Communist Party. 
But after sawing win of the historically pro-independence Democratic Progressive Party won a resounding victory in the 2016 presidential election in Taiwan, China has also become more autocratic at home and more forceful in its foreign policy under Xi. Many people in Taiwan are even more enraged by Beijing's ruthless suppression of democracy and freedoms in Hong Kong, because they worry that if they were subject to Beijing's power, they may suffer the same fate. As the Chinese military increases its pressure on the island in reaction to what Beijing views as provocations by the U.S. and Taiwanese governments, tensions are at an all-time high. Some Western experts believe that Taiwan's best course of action in an open confrontation would be to attempt to stall a Chinese invasion, try to prevent a shore landing by Chinese amphibious forces, and launch guerrilla attacks while awaiting foreign assistance. The U.S., which provides Taiwan with armaments, may be able to assist. Due to Washington's strategic ambiguity strategy, the U.S. has up until this point purposely been vague regarding whether or how it would defend Taiwan in the case of an assault. In terms of diplomacy, the U.S. still adheres to the One China policy, which accepts only the legitimacy of Beijing as the capital of China and favors formalizing relations with China over Taiwan. U.S. President Joe Biden, though, seemed to tighten Washington's stance in May of last year. In response to a question about whether the U.S. would militarily defend Taiwan, Mr. Biden said, yes. Washington has not altered its stance, according to the White House. Following Beijing's belligerent military shows in 2021, Taiwan's defense minister issued a warning that China will be able to undertake a full-scale invasion of Taiwan by 2025, sparking speculations about a possible armed clash. According to Bonnie Glazer, head of the Asia program at the German Marshall Fund of the United States, China's military exercises and maneuvers serve as a reminder to Taiwan and the U.S. not to breach Beijing's red lines. These red lines, according to her, include pushing for Taiwan's official independence or choosing to send numerous U.S. troops to the island. Aiming for a peaceful settlement to the standoff across the Taiwan Strait makes sense since experts have long warned that any attempt by Beijing to capture the island by force would be a very expensive venture with an unclear ending. Experts contend that Beijing's leaders are keeping an eye on the Western response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine with a view to Taiwan, and that the quick and coordinated response from the U.S. and its allies to that invasion has certainly concerned Beijing. It is unclear what lessons Beijing might learn from the Ukraine crisis, but given Russia's bungled invasion and the robust Western response, it might become more circumspect in its calculations. On the other hand, Beijing might also come to the conclusion that any attempt to take the island by force will only get harder the longer they wait, as Taiwan may get more serious about its defense and the U.S. and its allies may get more serious about preparing with Taiwan for that fight, according to Bill Bishop, a Sinocism newsletter author and expert on Chinese politics. That's all for today. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. Also, express your valuable thoughts in the comment section below. Until then, bye! Also, spend some time watching other videos on the channel.